Hey guys! In this episode of Lissa's Letters, I'm showing you how I went from this lettering composition, which a follower on Instagram submitted to me, to this design. I'll take you behind the scenes to see the revision process and some bonus footage of me painting the final draft. And along the way, I'll reveal my top tips to improve any lettering composition. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't been on this YouTube channel before, my name is Alyssa, and I'll be your hand lettering host for today. All right, you ready? I know I am, so let's dive in. Okay, so to make it easier for myself to work with, I've printed out the original design, and I transferred the letters onto tracing paper so that it would be in my own hand lettering style. Also, I can't resist working in pink and magenta. So what's the first thing that pops out at you when you look at the lettering on this piece of paper? Well, I noticed right away that the lettering doesn't fill out the space vertically. I mean, we've got all this empty space since the text is spread out horizontally. Which brings us to tip number one, fit your lettering composition into the space you have. If your paper's in portrait orientation, fill up the space vertically. And if your paper's in landscape, fit your design in horizontally. As a side note, that doesn't mean fill the entire paper. In fact, I usually leave a fair amount of empty space between the composition and the edge of the page. But the amount of empty space should feel natural given the size of the paper. Yes, in our original design, the artist did fill in the space with stars as little embellishments, but the bulk of the weight is in the area where the lettering lives. So for now, let's stick with portrait orientation for our design. No need to rotate our paper, right? In the original design, she used three lines of text, but maybe I'd opt for an arrangement of the text where each word is on its own line. Yeah, let's go with that, since it fills up more space vertically. Okay, so back to our tracing paper. I'm gonna go ahead and trace the words so that each one is on its own line, like we planned. And I've conveniently sketched a line down the middle of my tracing paper to help me keep my words nice and centered. But wait, once I've penciled in my first word, I realize that I might not want to trace all of the words just as they are. The word shine and without are pretty small. I mean, do I want to keep them that way? Let's go back to the drawing board and see if there's a better way. Our quote, stars can't shine without darkness, has five words, but not all words have equal weight. In fact, I'd say the most important word is shine, followed by stars and darkness. At least, that's my interpretation of the phrase. Shine feels like the word I want to emphasize the most. But the way the quote was written in the original design here, the word shine is rather small and doesn't stand out. Let's change that. So this brings us to tip number two. Decide early on which word or words you want to stand out and use size and font to separate them from the less important words. Now back to our quote. Once I've traced over the word can't, I set out designing a large space where I can put the word shine. I often find it helpful to make simple shapes like this rectangle here to give myself a specific area that I want the word to fill. And there I go, filling in that rectangle with some capital sans serif font letters. Later on, I decide to change this, but for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and trace over the remaining two words. And hey, nothing is set in stone at this point. During the design process, I'm always open to changing details like the style of the letters, but we'll get to that later. For now, I feel like I've accomplished my goal of making the word shine stand out. But while we're at it, let's separate the words stars and darkness, the two other important words, just a little bit more from the least important words. 
I can easily do this by making can't and without smaller. And I write them both in capitalized print letters. Cool, this is already looking better. And of course, even if we're focusing on making a fancy composition, we can't forget the fundamentals of lettering, like even letter spacing. So let's just refine this word a bit, making sure none of the letters are too close together or too far apart from one another. All right, got that out of the way. So let's check out tip number three for improving your lettering layout. Tip number three is to add a ribbon banner or frame. The banner or frame can go around one or more words. Here, I'm making a long, thin ribbon with multiple folds around the word can't. Why banners, you ask? Well, they add visual interest and aren't too difficult to draw. I have a couple videos on this channel where I show you how to draw a few different banners ranging from simple to complex, so check those out if you're interested. You can also grab a free handout with banners you can trace, which is available through my Lettering Layouts class on Skillshare. All of the relevant links will be in the video description. All right, let's move on to tip number four, which is add flourishes to your letters after you've placed the words and larger embellishments where you want them to be. In the original design of this composition, there are some fun flourishes on the word darkness and a nice S-shaped swash as the crossbar of the T here. Using the original as inspiration, let's start by crafting some flourishes on the word stars. I decide to add a couple of loops, focusing on keeping the word readable, which is really important. People need to be able to read the quote. Okay, I won't get into the design process of the flourishes too much in this video. If you want a deep dive into how to design flourishes, I have a two hour class on Skillshare called Flourishing Made Simple, as well as a brand new real time tutorial on my Patreon page. For now though, I'll give a few suggestions. I recommend that you design your flourishes in a very sketchy manner, preferably with a pencil before you go over them with ink. When I want to add flourishes above or below a long word, I often circle the letters off of which I can add a flourish. Here on the word darkness, the last stroke of the letter K seems like the perfect place to add a flourish because it is close to the center of the word and I can make a nice, simple, symmetrical flourish coming off of it. I also add flourishes to the tops of the A sender letters and a sender letters are just the taller ones like D and K. And they have loops that are great places to add flourishes. Confession, I don't really like the flourishes I designed here above the word darkness because they take up so much space and they don't really fit in with the rest of the composition, which has minimal flourishes in general. But don't worry, I eventually change it. So I brought the piece into Procreate on the iPad Pro because, well, sometimes it's just easier for me to make alterations digitally. And with this edited version now on a black background, to bring it closer in feel to the original piece, I just didn't feel as though it was balanced. Thus began a several months long process of every so often returning to this piece on my iPad which you're now seeing super condensed in just a few seconds. I thinned out the letter strokes just a bit so they would pop more against the black. I also changed the flourishes on the word stars to add more weight visually to the bottom half of the word since it had been looking kind of out of place above the banner. I simplified the flourishes above the word darkness added an arched frame around the word without to give it a cleaner look, and made the font of the word shine the same as stars and darkness. And all of these changes bring me to my fifth and final tip for the video, which is once you have everything in place, refine the spacing of the lettering and design elements so they feel balanced overall. 
It's completely okay to erase or redo entire sections of your composition. In fact, I would encourage it. I know that I've learned so much through revising my work. All right, so I'm finally happy with the layout design and it is time to transfer it onto the final piece of paper. First, I'll just quickly mention though, that I go into way more depth about the topics that I've covered in this video in my online class, Lettering Layouts. So check out that class if you wanna learn more of my secrets to composition design. Okay, back to today's piece of artwork. I rarely use black paper and wasn't sure how to accurately transfer the design since I couldn't see through the black paper at all when I tried to use my light pad. I ended up scribbling with my pencil on the back of the piece of paper that I printed the design on to make a faux transfer paper and I spent forever tracing over the letters but it was worth it because it worked. This whole thing was a bit of experimentation for me because of my lack of experience lettering on black. But I found that this silver metallic brush pen that I found worked well enough. It took a few passes for the silver to show up enough, but the result was pretty cool. And I ended up going over a lot of the lettering with homemade glitter and metallic paints from an artist that I follow on Instagram. The ability to make a piece of artwork sparkle and shine is one of the advantages of analog over digital. If only a camera could adequately capture it though, it's just so much more mesmerizing in person. Anyway, here is the finished piece. This composition is available for my patrons on Patreon to download and trace so you can practice your brush lettering skills in a fun way. It's available as a PDF to print or as a JPEG to upload into Procreate and trace digitally. When you sign up to support me on Patreon, you get access to monthly traceable lettering compositions like this one, bonus videos, and monthly lettering workbooks. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you in another video.